Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankara S Academy. Today's date is 11th November 2024. Today we are going to discuss three important topics. The first topic is about the Mpox virus. It is taken from Hindu newspaper. The second topic is about the private property and the common good. It talks about the recent Supreme Court decision on Article 39B and 39C. So it is taken from Indian Express newspaper. The third article is about Comptroller and Auditor General of India. It is taken from Indian Express newspaper. So these are the three important articles we are going to discuss for our prelims exam preparation. Shankara Ayes Academy's pre-storming prelims to series batch three is starting on 21st November 2024. Interested aspirants can enroll in it. Shankara Ayes Academy's Chakra series for current affairs program, which includes the current affairs classes and tests, is going on. Interested aspirants can join in it. Now let us get into the discussion. Now look at this article. In this article, we are going to see about an important topic in Indian Constitution. That is the balance between private property rights and the common good. This balance is primarily governed by two key provisions in our Constitution. The one is Article 31C, and another one is Article 39B. The recent Supreme Court judgment have brought a new clarity to this constitutional provisions. Let us break down this concept and understand for our prelims exam preparation. First, let us understand about Article 31C. This article was added through. 25th Constitutional Amendment Act in 1971. The purpose of this amendment is to shield certain type of laws which aim to implement the DPSP in Article 39 B and C. Now, what does this mean? It means if a government enact laws specifically for the purpose in Article 39 B and C, then these laws cannot be challenged for violating the fundamental rights. Now, coming to the Article 39 B, it specifically directs the state to ensure that the material resources of the community are distributed in a way which serves for common good. So, this allows the state to intervene in the economy to prevent the concentration of wealth. So, this is about Article 31C and Article 39B. Now, let us see about the evolution of this Article 31C. Firstly, it was introduced in 25th Amendment in 1971 and this amendment introduced to protect laws enacted for the common good to shield it from judicial reviews. So, the goal was to allow the state to enact welfare laws without being challenged as unconstitutional. Next, in Kesavananda Bharati case in 1973, the Supreme Court held that Article 31C protection would only apply to the laws specifically aligned with Article 39B and C. So, it does not apply to all the DPSP. In this case, the Supreme Court also introduced the Basic Structure Doctrine. Then, in Minerva Mills case in 1980, the court further clarified the scope of Article 31C. It struck down the phrase, all or any of the principles laid down in Part 4. So, thereby it limited Article 31C protection only to Article 39B and C. So, after Minerva Mills case, Article 31C only shield the laws that are specifically directed towards Article 39B and C and not towards all DPSP. Now, coming to the current period, recently a case is going on in Supreme Court, Property Owners Association versus State of Maharashtra. So, in this case, the petitioner argued that certain Maharashtra laws infringe the private property rights and fundamental rights. So, what is the current status of Article 31C? See, the petitioner argued that after Minerva Mills case, the Article 31C was significantly limited. The court clarified that the primary purpose of Article 31C remains intact and it is still meant to protect certain welfare oriented laws which are aligned with Article 39 B and C. So, this means the judiciary is taking a careful and balanced approach and allowing the state to bypass fundamental rights only if the laws are specifically targeted towards Article 39B and C. So, now what is the view of Supreme Court on Article 39B? Does a private property fall under the material resources of community which is explained in Article 39B? In past cases, Supreme Court suggested that the material resources could include both public and private property. The court also emphasized that not all private property can automatically be considered as material resource under Article 39B. The state needs to evaluate certain factors before claiming the private property for the common good. So, court outlined some four important key factors. First one is the nature and the character of resource. Is a property essential for public use? For example, the land for public road or hospital. The second one is impact on welfare. How does this property benefit society? The third one is scarcity of resource. Is this property a rare one or essential resource? The fourth one is concentration of power. Does the control of property by one individual or group affect the economic equality? So, these are the four important key factors that are considered by the Supreme Court before considering a property 
that is a private property taken by government. The court recognized that India's economy has been shifting towards a mixed model. So, in other words, a private ownership is now respected alongside the public ownership. So, using Article 39B as a blanket justification to take over a private property contradicts this balance. So, this is all about the discussion. In this context, let us see an MCQ. Which constitutional amendment introduced Article 31C to the Indian Constitution? The correct answer is Option C, 25th Amendment. With this, let us move on to the next news article. Now, look at this news article. Scientists have found that M pox clade law, historically limited to animal to human transmissions, now shows human to humans transmission. So, WHO has declared M pox a public health emergency and African nations facing vaccine shortages are relying on targeted immunization. So, the news article here talks about the human to human transmission of M pox virus. So, in this context, let us once again revise about the basics of M pox. See, the M pox or monkey pox is caused by DNA virus belonging to the family Poxyviridae. So, this family of virus is known for a large double stranded DNA virus. The virus was first identified in monkeys in 1958. M pox is directly transmitted from animals to humans by rodents and primates. They can also transmit through contaminated objects. Human to human transmission occurs over a direct contact with the body fluids, respiratory droplets and contaminated materials. 2023 global outbreak saw a significant increase in the transmission through close contact including sexual routes. Now talking about the symptoms, the incubation period for Mpox virus typically ranges from 7 to 14 days but it can extend from 5 to 21 days. The initial symptoms were fever, headache, back pain, swollen limb, exhaustion, etc. So, a characteristic rash develops after 3 to 4 days. So, this is after the fever, there will be rashes on the body. Now, regarding vaccination treatment, the vaccine for Mpox is called as Gineos, which is also known as Imvamune or Imvanex. It is non replicating live vaccine. This means it does not cause the disease but helps the immune system recognize and fight the virus. Currently, the vaccine availability and effectiveness are very limited. The vaccines originally developed from smallpox virus. So, the vaccine from smallpox virus is used against the Mpox virus. The treatment is mainly supportive. That means it is focusing on the symptom treatment. With this, let us discuss an MCQ regarding this topic. WHO has declared Mpox as which of the following? The correct answer is option B, global health emergency. So, with this, let us move on to the next news article. Now, look at this article. The article discusses the Maharashtra's physical health and it also highlights the debt burden flagged by CAG. So, in this context, let us discuss about the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Firstly, about the constitutional provisions. The CAG is established under Article 148 to 151 of Indian Constitution. Article 148 established the CAG as an independent authority who is responsible for auditing the accounts of union and state governments. So, he is responsible for auditing not only the accounts of central government but also of the state governments. CAG is a constitutional authority. So, he is appointed by President of India and functions independently of the executive. So, this is for unbiased auditing by CAG. Now, regarding the appointment and tenure, the CAG is appointed by President of India and he holds the office for 6 years and up to the age of 65. So, whichever is earlier. They can only be removed through a process similar to that of removing Supreme Court judge. Now, regarding the powers and functions of CAG, CAG audits all the receipts and expenditure of union and state governments. He also audits the government owned corporation and entities that are funded by government sources. CAG audit reports on the union and state finances are submitted to president and respective governors. So, the president and the respective governors submit them in the parliament and state legislatures. So, CAG does not directly submit these reports to the parliament or state legislature. He submits to the president and the governor of the state and they submit it to the parliament or state legislature. So, he also plays an advisory role. He provides advice on financial matters, suggesting reforms for better financial management and accountability. Now, regarding CAG role in public financial management, CAG ensures that public funds are utilized as intended by parliament and state legislature. So, thereby he monitors the funds or adherence to the budgetary allocations. Then, ensuring the fiscal discipline, CAG audits ensure the government follows the fiscal policies that promote sustainable and responsible management of public finances. And regarding the debt management and budget execution, CAG audits a government debt and provides insights into 
the sustainability of borrowing levels and adherence to the repayment schedules. He also audits the government schemes. See, CAG evaluates the government schemes like PM Kisan or Ayushman Bharat and he audits them for the effective fund utilization. So, CAG audits the central government finances, the state government finances and he submits a report to the president and state governors. He also audits the government owned companies and he ensures a physical discipline and he makes sure the debt management is fine and he audits the government schemes. So, these are the important functions of CAG. Now, what is the significance of CAG in ensuring the accountability? CAG serves as the guardian of public funds, ensuring that government agencies are accountable for taxpayer money. So, he is a watchdog for public resources. Through its report, CAG provides legislators with the data to hold on the executive accountable. So, he supports the parliamentary oversight on executive. He also identifies the corruption and mismanagement in public finances. So, the findings of CAG are made public in parliament and state legislatures. Thereby, it enhances the transparency and promotes better governance. Now, let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Consider the following statements regarding Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Now, look at the first statement. CAG is responsible for auditing the accounts of both union and state governments, including the departments and public sector undertakings. This statement is correct. Now, look at the second statement. The CAG reports are submitted directly to the parliament and state legislature where they are discussed and acted upon. This is a wrong statement. As we have seen in the discussion, CAG reports are submitted only to the president and the respective governors and not to the parliament or state legislature. So, this statement is obviously incorrect. Now, look at the third statement. The removal process of CAG is similar to that of Supreme Court judge. Yes, this statement is correct. So, the correct answer is option B, 1 and 3 only. With this, let us conclude the discussion. Now, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.